Hey there guys, Dave here from CNC 3D. Today we're going to be going through a fun little project involving our Sharp CNC kit and one of our laser engraver kits. Um, we're going to be cutting out six coasters today in some Australian red oak plywood um, and then we're going to be laser engraving that with one of our 10 watt laser kits. So let's just get started here and start with cutting out the actual shapes for the coasters. So to do that, we're gonna be using Easel today, which is a great program that's been designed by Inventables. It makes getting into CNC really simple and it's fully compatible with our Sharp CNC kits and the controllers that we supply. So we've already logged into Easel at this point and we've come up to our main projects window. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a new project now, the first thing that you'll notice with Easel is on the left-hand side here, this is your canvas where you can put various shapes and import various files in order for you to create nice CNC projects. On this side over here um, is where you can actually um, see what it's gonna look like uh, when you actually go to run that carve. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our material, uh, set up our end mill, and we're gonna set up the fees and speeds that we want to run this machine at. So up here, you can see it says birch plywood and it's got some dimensions on there. We're just gonna click on that. Um, with regards to the material type that you can choose in Easel, uh, they just do that to give you a recommendation of the approximate feeds and speeds to use to suit one of their X-Carve machines. Um, we're going to be using one of our Sharp CNC kits with a full Queen Bee upgrade on there today. Um, so a very sturdy machine, so we're definitely going to be bumping up those numbers considerably. So we're going to leave it as birch plywood for now because it is very close to the Australian red oak plywood that we are using. So the way that we've set up this workpiece at the moment is that our X axis is 300 millimetres and our Y axis is 400 millimetres and we know that it's 7 mil thick Australian red oak so what we're actually going to do is make this 7.2 we're doing this just to make sure that we get a nice smooth cut all the way through and we're not left with any wafer thin layers of timber at the bottom of the job now that we've set up the actual material let's move on to the end mill so the type of end mill that we're using is one of our turbo cut four millimeter two flute straight cut end mills and they're great for timber um, they tend not to pull Schwarf out of the job and they tend not to uh, push Schwarf downwards. Instead they basically just mix it all around and they're really good for timbers uh, and other types of composites as well too. So we're going we're gonna to select the straight cut option here but we're going to choose other. And we know we have a 4mm end mill in there so let's just change that to 4mm. And then what we're going to do is close out of there. Now you'll notice that a caution comes up here on easel. And the reason for this is because it's not sure what feeds and speeds to actually give you for a metric end mill. So we're just gonna cancel out of that and go into the cut settings. And then we're gonna go into the custom option. And this is where we can actually put in the feeds and speeds that we want to use. So what we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to do 2000 millimeters per minute, which is quite a modest sort of figure for our full Queen B upgrade. We're gonna do a plunge rate of 300 millimeters per minute and we're only gonna do a three mil depth per pass on there, just so we can have a look at the overall finish on the side of the timber once it's cut. So now that we've gone through and set up that, let's start adding our shapes on here in order to create our coasters. So we're gonna place a square on the canvas side over here on the left, and we're gonna roughly drag this. I like to drag it nice and close, sort of towards where the zero is, but leave a little bit of a gap there. And then what we're gonna do is start to manipulate this particular shape. So the first thing that we need to do, as you can see on our visual representation, it wants to cut a whole area out. That's not actually what we want to do. We want to cut out a specific rectangle or square out of here. So we're gonna to go to the outline option over here and we want to preserve the inside shape. So we're gonna ask it to go on the outside of the job. And we'll just now readjust this a little bit again. Now, we wanted to cut all the way through this material. At the moment, it's set to 2.9 millimeters. So let's just drag this all the way down to the 7.2 millimeters. And as you can see on here, it's wanting to add these four yellow tabs. Now, these tabs are designed to keep your workpiece still while the end mill travels through it. Um, we are using a two flute straight cut end mill. 
from our experience, it's quite safe for us to completely remove tabs and the job piece doesn't really move much at all. Although that is up to you as to whether or not you wish to do that. We will be doing that today so you can see the results of it. So let's just untick the use tabs option and then now it just wants to cut straight through there. Now the next step is, let's click on the shape tab up here. And this is where we can adjust the size of this shape. So we're gonna go with 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters for our coaster. And we are going to add a 10% or 10 mil corner radius on here as well. As you can see, that's given us a nice rounded finish on there and is at the size that we want it to be. Now we do wanna make up six of these today. So we're going to be copying this one. So Control C and then Control V. And using our keyboard, we can move it over and create a small gap in between the two pieces. Once we've got both of these, we can drag and select the both of them and Control C and Control V. And we can drag these up here a little bit. And what we'll do now is we'll just hit the minus down here just to zoom out a little bit to give us a little bit more working space. And we'll select these two again and we'll copy and we'll paste. And then now, as you can see, we have our six shapes ready to go cut out on our sharp CNC. So let's go ahead and fire that one up now. So this is the next step here. We're going to be using a program called T2 Laser to do some laser engraving on our coasters that we've just cut out of our hardwood. Um, so this program is a very simple program to use. We do recommend it for beginners. It does cost roughly around $50 for a lifetime license. There are better programs out there such as Lightburn, but we find for beginners this is a great pro program to get started with. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to load up the image that we want to use for this. So we've got two different images that we will be engraving today. We're just going to focus on one of them for now. So the first one is this lovely mandala image that we have here. So once we've loaded that in there, we're just going to have a look at our output size. Now the default output size is 73.6 mil. We're going to make that a little bit larger and we're going to go with a 80 mil output, which should make it nice and easy for us to adjust the size on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our resolution. At the moment, the resolution on here is 0.1. We're pretty happy with that. Um, we are going to go ahead and leave that at 0.1 millimeters. Um, it's going to give us a nice crystal clear picture on these tight little sections here. And we'll have a look at our laser power. We're going to set this to 200 as our maximum laser power with zero as our lowest laser power. Our feed rate is quite high. We're going to be running this at 8,000 millimeters per minute. We find this to give the best results with our 10 watt laser kit uh, on this red oak. And we're gonna leave it as diagonal engraving on here, which means it's going to do passes from the bottom to the left, bottom to the left, until it eventually does the entire pattern from start to finish. Now, it is a black and white image, and we do have the option of doing a black and white engraving to give us a nice and tight 
end result. So we've gone through and set up pretty much all the settings that we need to set. There's nothing else we really need to change. So let's just go ahead here and actually set up and position our job ready to go.